Hello, it's Scott Manley here. And today I want to talk to you about the new pictures coming back from the Dawn spacecraft around Ceres. It has now got closer than ever before and we are really able to see the great details in those white spots. Now you remember back in 2015 when it was arriving we were starting to see these interesting white spots on the surface and there was a lot of speculation. I mean most people speculated that they were salts but of course some crazy people thought they were you know alien bases and stuff like that or you know the proto-molecule and those people suggesting the proto-molecule uh, didn't read their books because of course the proto molecule ends up on Eros and not Ceres. But never mind. Look, the Dawn spacecraft has been one of my favorites because um, it has visited multiple asteroids and it's gone into orbit and it was able to do this because it has an amazing engine. So it was launched back in 2007 from Florida. It was launched in the Delta II rocket. From there, it, uh, start, it of course started using its thrusters, its ion thrusters, had a gravity assist around Mars, had a bit of a glitch there. And uh, also in flight, it started to lose reaction wheels. So they had to adjust their stabilization systems, but their engine has been amazing. It's got something like 10 kilometers per second of delta V using xenon electric propulsion. The, uh, the thrusters actually gimbal a little so they can adjust for uh, changes in the center of mass in the spacecraft. And then after they started to lose reaction wheels, they were able to use that to keep the air the spacecraft stable. So, you know, it's got a lot of this. And so it's also been the only mission that has been able to visit multiple asteroids and go into orbit. Previous multi-target missions have essentially had to um, had to do just fly past because the delta V for a, a, an actual orbit is a whole lot higher. So yeah, the, in, in total the engine has run for something like six years continuous thrust, which is you know unheard of at this point. So the latest changes, it had been sitting in orbit around Ceres since uh, June 2017. There had been some discussion about whether they could break orbit and go to other targets, but the science teams that were in charge of it decided that it would be safer to leave it in orbit around uh, Ceres. And the decision has essentially been made to keep it there collecting data until its hydrazine fuel reserves run out. It needs those, uh, the hydrazine for stabilization. And it looks like later this year, we might finally lose attitude control on it. Anyway, yeah, I've been sitting there in sitting with its engine doing nothing since June 2017. It relit the engine to adjust its orbit in April, brought itself into a highly elliptical orbit. And then in May, it went even lower. And now it's basically an elliptical orbit that brings it within 35 kilometers off the surface. And that is why we can get these amazing images. So these bright spots, uh, when look close, it looks more like snowfall. Uh, these are from the Ocator crater, which is one of the more prominent equator, uh, craters. Uh, it's not... Well, it's not the only place where these white spots exist. They're all over the place and there's various uh, locations, various mechanics. But it's now believed, based on evidence, that these are sodium carbonate deposits. And the way this happens is you have water underneath the surface that is flowing towards the surface over time. They bring up hydrated salts and then the water essentially evaporates away over time, leaving behind these white deposits. And in this case, since it's in the middle of the crater, it's very likely that the impact has adjusted the geology in such a way that the, it encouraged water upwelling. Uh, there's actually other places on the surface where, where, we have, where we see these. There's a really good example of a cryovolcano. It's called Ahuna Mons, and Ahuna is a, um, a f harvest festival in India, which of course feeds into the whole mythology of the name Ceres. Ceres was also related to the harvest. So uh, yeah, that's how they come up with these names. This uh, Mons is a five kilometer high, 20 kilometer wide volcano. And the cratering on it suggests that it has been active at least in the last few hundred million years. Anyway, the reason for these really low orbits is because it's, while it gives us great pictures, the pictures are not the reason why they're going this low. The reason they're looking to use something called the gamma ray and neutron detector. This is a passive instrument which looks at gamma rays and neutrons, right? Now the gamma rays and neutrons aren't coming from the spacecraft. These are random, uh, these are coming from the surface after cosmic rays hit the surface. So the cosmic rays come in with a lot of energy and there's a particle, uh, particles that spawn off 
and these get detected. And if you make some assumptions about what the incoming ga uh, cosmic rays are, you can then use these to model the interactions with various uh, at atoms. So by getting really close, it gives them much better information on the exact atomic composition of the surface and of the materials in the asteroid. And that's what this is all about, really absolutely getting that chemistry down as best as possible. And yeah, we're going to get some nice pictures from it. We're going to get a lot more. Uh, we don't know how long it's going to last, but man, this is pretty amazing. Uh, Ceres has been one of the best studied objects in a very long time, and I'm continuing to look forward to new surprises that we expect over the coming years and of course uh, even after the you know, spacecraft stops it will no doubt be delivering will no doubt be getting new insights from the data that it has delivered i'm scott manley fly safe